everyone. Uh, the video you're about to see is going to be a little bit different. Um, I got some requests recently uh, with questions about how I got into flying powered parachutes. So um, this video is going to be a voiceover with uh, me describing the steps that I took to get into the sport. So uh, hope that you enjoy the video. Thanks. So as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, um, I'm going to describe just briefly how I got into flying powered parachutes. I had no previous experience flying powered parachutes. I had some experience um, on several occasions to, f to fly small aircraft, uh, specifically Cessna 152s. And um, I, I, it was okay, but I didn't really like the confinement of it. And uh, you know, the, the costs involved, the rental, um, most of the uh, rentals in my area are going at 85 to to $100 per hour to rent one of these aircraft. And I, I, I didn't really want to do that. So as I've described on my YouTube channel, I just wanted, I wanted to own something, um, own an aircraft that I could just fly when I wanted to. And uh, I wanted something that I could bring home and store in my garage. And because of, of that, um, aircraft with wings were kind of out uh, of the picture because it would be very difficult to transport those to an airport, set them up and fly. So um, I, I looked at trikes. Um, I, I looked at other types of aircraft and I I settled in on the powered parachute because uh, it is an aircraft that I can put on a trailer and put in my garage and it's easy to set up and uh, powered parachutes are relatively inexpensive compared to other types of, air of aircraft so I decided on that and then uh, I also had to make a decision on whether I wanted a two-seater or a single-seat powered parachute. I came to a decision on a single seat for a couple of reasons. One is um, it was, I, I didn't really want to get a pilot's uh, license. And um, I really didn't have a need for two seats because my wife really is not that interested in flying. And, and I, I figured that there really wouldn't be that many occasions where I really would have a passenger. And because uh, a single seater um, can be an ultralight, and that's what I, I chose in the end, um, I didn't have to have any requirements as far as uh, certified FAA uh, 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 me uh, mechanics working on the aircraft. I could do all my own work. So that got me to uh, ultralight single seat powered parachute. And then I, I went to see if there was anybody in my area that, that could train me how to fly one. And it turned out there was someone near Lynchburg, Virginia, which is about 50 miles from me, that is a certified powered parachute instructor. And I contacted him, and he agreed to train me. So with those things in place, um, I placed an order for an ultralight powered parachute um, uh, that, uh, that I liked. Uh, the one I purchased has a four-stroke um, uh, 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 engine on it compared to most that have the two-stroke uh, uh, engines um, because the four-stroke, in my opinion, is more durable. It's, it requires less maintenance, and it's more, more, uh, more reliable. So um, I chose the Dragonfly. And at that time, um, a company in Cassopolis, uh, Michigan, was manufacturing those types of powered parachutes. And I placed an order for the powered parachute. And then I went to Cassopolis, Michigan um, several months later and picked it up and brought it back home to where I live here in Virginia. So once I got the uh, powered parachute 
home to Virginia, um, I started to pursue the training part of it. And that, by far, was the hardest part. Um, and the reason being is the, the instructor that I was going to be using, he had a full-time job. Um, uh, I, in addition, we had to find uh, nights that he was available and the weather was acceptable. And, uh, and then also, I, I was working full-time, and so I had to, in the evenings, uh, you know, line up with line up with him to get all these things in place. You know, good weather, him being available, me being available, and then I'd have to drive uh, 50 miles to a small um, airport where he had his uh, training power parachute. It was a, a two-person power parachute. It had controls for the for the instructor, and it also had controls for the student and uh, so all those things had to line up every time I got training and so um, so it took uh, three months to to get in 10 hours of training and uh, it, he was a good instructor and uh, uh, learning to fly the powered parachute really is not that difficult it's just getting a feel for it. It's um, to me. I think it's more um, anticipating, um, you know, what's happening in front of you, um, realizing that you know you have to react before you get to something. They're they're uh, they're slow moving, but you know if you're too low and there's trees coming, you need to think about that before you get there. And when you're coming in to land. Um, you know, you need to line yourself up um, to touch down, you know, early on the runway so you don't run out of room. Uh, or if you, if you abort the landing, you have enough room left to lift off and, and clear the trees. Um, also, uh, uh, learning where you are. I mean, once you get up in the sky, it's, it's harder to see a little runway and which direction you're flying in and, and uh, landmarks. And things like that. So, uh, in my opinion, it was uh, by far the hardest part of it was getting the training. But again, not that difficult. But just uh, finding the the times uh, that we could both get together when the weather was good um, was was the biggest thing. So after 10 hours of training, because I had a power uh, uh, ultralight powered parachute. There was really no requirements um, for me to have, you know, a certain number of hours of training, um, you know, uh, uh, before I actually uh, got into my own powered parachute. The thing is, it's mine was a single seat, and once you're in it, you know, there's nobody there to help you anymore. So you have to have enough confidence in what you've learned to, uh, you know, to be ready to. Uh, to, you know, you know, to fly your own aircraft without any help, and so what I did uh, between sessions that I I had with him, um, I would practice. I'd go to an airport and I would practice, uh, you know, um, handling of the wing and taxiing and things like that. So after ten hours of training, I uh, I felt like I was ready to. Um, you know, to, to fly my own powered parachute for the first time. So um, that was an interesting experience. I, uh, I lined up, I made sure I had a good day, lined up on, a, on um, the runway at the airport that I, that's near me. And um, I got the wing nice and steady up above me, rolling down the runway, and I gave it full power and I took off. And, the first time that happens to you when you're, <laughs> at least for me, uh, when I started climbing out, you know, it, it, it gets you just, a, you know, it shocks you a little bit. There you are flying your own aircraft and there's no one there to help. And so the, the natural reaction is to, to let off the power, you know, to, because, you know, you just, you know, I don't know how to explain it, but it just, 
you, you know you don't want to get too high but the reality of it is you want to get high because you're safer when you're flying higher so I let off on the throttle and then I started dropping towards the runway again so I instantly realized what I did wrong and I gave it full throttle again and then I started climbing out and my instructor told me when I slide for the first time to not try to land or anything right away just fly it around and get a feel for it stay up high get a feel for it so I flew around for probably about 45 minutes to an hour you know just getting the feel for the aircraft and then when I came down uh, to land it's it's uh, it's kind of scary the first time it um, when you get closer to the ground and I, I saw this even when I was training when you get closer to the ground the ground looks like it's moving a lot faster and so you come down and you get close to the ground that ground is really moving by and uh, you just got to flare you know you learn how to flare the chute and set it down and uh, I'll tell you that that first experience was something that I will never ever forget I mean it's just uh, an exhilaration that I just can't really um, you know uh, describe to you that you you finally have gotten to the point where you have an aircraft and you can fly it without any help so uh, that's how that happened 